Holy Sacrifice Day is for Living Intention of Fernando Grant. Uh, good morning. As we offer Mass on this fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday, Rejoice Sunday, similar to the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, uh, both words mean rejoice. Uh, so we're taking a peek at our goal for Lent, right? All of our penances, um, particular way, but then our prayers, our works of mercy. The goal is heaven, but also, I mean, Easter. Um, passion, death, resurrection of our Lord. So the church gives us a little, you know, about halfway through, a little bit more so. And so we, you know, um, have some flowers on the, on the altar and colors, of course, aren't purple, uh, a little bit brighter colors we have. So um, just a reminder what we're, what we're doing this for. Um, but also the, the readings today are for that of the Sunday of the second scrutiny. Um, so the scrutinies of three um, particular Sundays in Lent for those who are preparing to be baptized at um, Easter. Um, and so the readings are particularly chosen by the church. Uh, last week was the woman at the well. Um, and today is uh, this man born blind. So the focus is Christ, the light of the world if you noticed in the readings and then the prayers. Um, and if you ever have the uh, opportunity to attend the Easter Vigil, you'll notice that the church is complete dark, completely dark, a reminder of what the world was like when Christ came, completely dark in sin, because original sin had not been wiped away yet. Our Lord had not died to make up for all of our sins. So there was a spiritual darkness in the world. Um, and then, as you notice, the Paschal candle um, actually, which has the five wound marks of Christ, is, you know, behold, we sing, we chant three times as we walk into the church, you know, Christ our light. This candle is a symbol for us of Christ the light of the world. Uh, who, may, who came into the world of darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, as St. John says at the beginning of his gospel. So one of the themes for St. John's gospel is light versus darkness. Uh, the light of Christ that he brings to our souls, um, but also to our minds. The truth, the truth that sets free. Okay, it's a light. Um, and here we see in the gospel where you know, he's, he heals a man physically, but he's also healing him spiritually too um, and bringing him into a deeper faith. Uh, is what he's doing. Exactly, very similar to what he did with the woman at the well. He enters into a conversation with a person, right? Um, here, it's pretty quick healing. Um, and yet, the man seems as if he still needs some spiritual um, you know, help to come to that belief that Christ is, that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, the Pharisees are in darkness because of their pride. So someone who's proud cannot love. We know this, right? It's always about themselves first. Right? So it's always going to limit their ability to love. Ultimately, for all of us, if I want to learn how to love, if I want to be joyful, uh, which is what this day is about, and um, ultimately about every day as a Christian, is, um, well, I have to be able to love. Love and joy go hand in hand, so I have to be humble. And a humble person thinks first of God and then of one's neighbor. And we strive to give ourselves, um, not compromising any truths of Christ, of course. Sometimes we have to stand up for them, and by standing up for them, we have to sacrifice. We know that right now. I mean, we're going through that um, uh, a bit in our country. Um, but let's not forget what the early Catholics had to deal with in our country, right? I mean, in Virginia, you couldn't vote as a Catholic. Right, until 1775. You couldn't practice the faith. I mean, the, um, the Brents, you know, Brentsville, uh, the Brents were the only Catholic country, uh, family, really, in Virginia up until about 1775. There were a few others, but the Jesuits had to come across the river um, under cloak of darkness, say mass, and go back uh, to Maryland. So it's just, you know, it's good to have perspective. Uh, but yet, the truth sets free. We know that. And this is what should bring us joy. The Pharisees, no. Their, their pride blocks them. They're not able to have a faith and, and believe in God, and believe in Christ. And, and this is the lesson for us, to learn from the blind man, you know, to have this, you know, Lord, you know, I, I want to see. Um, and our Lord, if, you know, he says, ask you shall receive. Seek you shall find, knock the door shall be open. Okay, Lord, please show me. I mean, my vocation, what you want of me today, um, but it needs to be that time spent with him so he can guide us. Okay, so he can heal us. Um, so our Lord, here for us as Catholics now, many centuries later, what brings spiritual healing? Well, the sacrament of penance, confession. All right. So he, he wipes away the, the, 
the, the blindness, this physical malady of this man, uh, believed by the Jews because he was sin a sinner, but he wasn't necessarily. Okay? And then, you know, our Lord, the parallel for us is, well, our spiritual blindness comes from sin. Sin blinds us to be able to see, you know, who truly God is, okay, as my merciful loving Father, um, to see my neighbor as myself, okay, to be able to love my neighbor as myself, uh, to see the opportunities of grace that he gives to me every day. Yeah, sin blinds. Sin totally blinds, okay? Um, and actually, it removes joy. So as we're working our way through Lent, and we have our, our prayer and our works of mercy and our penance, you know, when it comes to penance or mortification, it means to die to oneself. Uh, mortification comes from the root word for death, a morgue, right, where the dead are. Well, mortification should always bring us joy. It's all about joy, right? When it's done out of love for one's neighbor, when it's done out of love for one's spouse, one's child, one's sibling, one's parent, okay, co-worker, friend. Okay? When mortification is done out of love, it brings joy. It does, actually. And any of us who've done it, and any of us who've not done it knows it doesn't work. You, know, you don't have joy. Well, I, I thought it'd be better if I, if I ate that last cookie. Well, you didn't bring you, didn't bring you much joy. As opposed to if you like, eh, give it to a brother or sister. Great. There's a joy that comes with that. Totally. Right? And the more you get used to it, the more joy you have. Mother Teresa, case in point. Okay? Those of us who remember her, those of you who don't remember, well, talk to your parents and grandparents. Joyful. You know, she has nothing. She's giving of herself totally every day, okay? Her sisters, go visit one of the convents. Complete joy. They're giving of themselves totally every day, right? It's not about them. And yet you see this incredible joy they have. Why? Well, that's what happens with love. Joy and love go always go. When you follow Christ, the light of the world, you follow his truth in your life, okay, whether it's a single person, married, consecrated. Okay, so, you know, St. Paul VI, Pope, you know, St. Paul, Pope Paul VI, who was the Pope from 1963 to 1978, he says this about when it comes to happiness in the world and sometimes how we can um, be distracted or confused. Technological society has succeeded in multiplying the occasions of pleasure but finds great difficulty in giving birth to happiness. For happiness has its origin elsewhere. It is a spiritual thing. Money, comfort, hygiene, material security, etc., may often not be lacking, but nevertheless, despite these advantages, boredom, suffering, and sadness are frequently to be found supervening in the lives of many people. Right? So it's good for us on this Sunday then, as we hear this gospel, uh, that we are asking our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph to help us to have this focus on Christ, the light of the world, so we can be truly free, but we can truly be joyful um, in this life and perfectly in the next. May my God bless you through the Immaculate Heart of Mary.